and welcome back. It's been a little bit over a month since my last video, and if you recall from that video, I had the shop pretty full of stuff. And I talked about I was in the process of trying to straighten things out, trying to clean the shop up a little bit and organize, and more importantly, I needed to find all of my tools. In the various moves that I've had over the last year and a half, the, the tools kind of got packed away and I was not able to find them for the longest time. Um, I've now been in this house. We moved in here in October, um, so a little over six months now, and finally started cleaning things up, arranging things, organizing the shop, and finally found my tools. They're actually in the garage in and in some moving boxes that we haven't gotten to yet. So it was nice to finally find those. So here I am, uh, as you can see in this video, the shop is a little cleaner, a little more organized. And now that I have my tools, I can finally get back to work on my RV-14. It's, it's been a while, I wanna say it's been about two years since I've last actually done metal work for this airplane. And other than that, I've just been moving stuff, moving from one house to another and uh, not had a chance to work on anything. The, the last video that I did, I think was in July or so of last year when I was in a rental home with a shop. And I think I was installing the autopilot in the right wing, the servo for the autopilot for the ailerons. And so it's it's been a while. And so I'm trying to get back into making these videos, uh, working on uh, metal. <laughs> so... This is a, an attempt to get back into the groove of things, uh, get back into the practice of working with uh, metal and with, with riveting and all the techniques that I learned in the uh, first year and a half of working on this airplane. But I figured I would do it on something that was inexpensive rather than on the left spar, which is where I'm at in the build process. And so if I messed things up because I didn't remember how to do something, it's a cheap mistake. So this is the Vans Aircraft uh, Toolbox Kit. I've had this for quite some time, and I was going to do this with my, my son, who just turned eight, but I instead decided to get back into the swing of things and relearn and, and make sure I remembered how to do all of this stuff cheaply. <laughs> so that's what this video is. I have cut this down as much as I could. So you're seeing a lot of the highlights of this, but for the most part, this was just to, like I said, kind of get back into the swing of things, both in the metal work, all the tools that I'm using, the squeezer, all of that stuff. And then also putting all of this video together. Um, as I've said before in previous videos, this is actually, uh, for me, a, a more fun putting the videos together than even working on the air, uh, aircraft itself. And don't get me wrong, I enjoy that. That's that's why I've kept at it so long. But I also really like putting these videos together. So as I'm going through, I'm, I'm trying to remember which tools to use for what. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of specialty tools that I've picked up over the process of, of building this airplane. Uh, including you know, some of the, the dies that I have for the dimples, the dimple dies. Uh, I have one that are the substructure dimple dies uh, you know, for um, the, the smaller rivets or, or the larger rivets, both. And they're, they're, they make the dimple a little bit larger. I mean, just talking a couple of tenths or a couple hundredths uh, larger. So that way the skin that's dimpled sits inside of the structure that it's attaching to just a little bit better. Um, so it's just things like that that I was trying to relearn and trying to, to remember to do during this process so that as I get back to building the left wing, I'll remember to do that kind of stuff. Now, as far as the plane itself, I'm actually, um, if, if you recall from previous videos, I have got the tail cone mostly complete. Um, the right wing is pretty much complete with the exception of putting the rest of the bottom skins on, which I'm going to leave that way until I'm ready to put the wings on the fuselage. There's no reason to close it up just yet, just in case there's something else that I think of or, you know, some new toy that I want to put into the wings. I still have access. 
So it's going to stay like that until I'm ready to attach the wings. Um, now, as far as the left wing, where I left off was the fuel tanks were the things I did first, both left and right, uh, just because they're a pain in the butt and might as well get them done when I'm all excited when I first got the wings kit. So I did both the fuel tanks first uh, and went through all that mess. I've set up the the leading edge, the outer leading edge. I believe I just need to match drill all the ribs to the skin and then uh, put it all together. And I still need to put the lights in both the left and right wings. I'm uh, looking at, there's a, a an Australian company that has a kit that you can buy for the, the wingtip lights um, that you can set up to do the wigwam and all that kind of stuff, but you assemble it all together. Uh, you, you put it together yourself. You get all the components and you wire in all the LEDs and all the, everything that goes with it. And that, to me, seems more interesting and exciting. So I think that's the route I'm going to go. And they're actually fairly inexpensive compared to um, the normal lights that you get from vans. So... That's some of the next stuff I'm going to be working on. Uh, other than that, the, the left wing, I have this spar. I started riveting some of the ribs to the spar, the, the, the aft ribs. Um, and that's kind of where I've left off. So that's what I've got left is to finish attaching the ribs to the spar and then uh, start attaching the, the fuel uh, tank and the leading edge, outer leading edge, to the forward end of the, of the spar. And it'll be fairly caught up. So I don't have a whole lot uh, left for this. I think I'll probably get all of this done within this year. Um, and I'm kind of setting myself up for spring of next year to hopefully be able to purchase the fuselage kit. Uh, I've, I've put a total of about 18 months into the project so far of actual work. Um, now, like I said, it's been about a year and a half, almost two years that I've not been able to do anything with this. Uh, I think the last entry in my log for actual uh, metal work was, I wanna say November of 2018. That sounds about right. So it's been a, a good amount of time, a year and a half or, or so. So it's time to get back to this. So I'm excited, you know, able to uh, get these things started and get back into uh, putting this RV-14 together. A uh, few folks that I've been following that are also building RV-14s are significantly farther along than I am. Um, a couple I started out at the same time they, they did. And uh, a friend of mine in in uh, down in Glendale, Arizona, he and I started at the same time. I think we bought our kits, uh, the initial kits, about a month apart. And a couple months ago, he actually got his... Uh, aircraft certified and so I, I'm fairly certain he's now in the testing phase and hopefully just about complete with that um, so I've fallen back quite a bit and you know life happens as they say but I'm looking forward to getting back onto this so with that uh, this will be uh, our primary aircraft once it's done some of you may know I also have a Cherokee uh, 235 and it's a you know four seater good airplane. I've I've been flying it since the end of 2017, I think. And uh, unfortunately, uh, three or four months ago, did the annual and found that the engine is no good anymore. It's it's wiped uh, some of the lobes on the camshaft. So it's now a big giant paperweight, which sucks. But I'm I'm debating on whether or not to keep it and. Uh, put a new engine in it with the cost that goes with that or to just sell it as is and kind of just get out from underneath it while I can and put that money towards something else. Uh, my wife and I are in a process of getting a, I believe it's a 1940s Piper Vagabond, uh, 40s or 50s, I think it's 40s, um, from her, my wife's grandfather. And uh, so I, I get to go through and learn how to fly a tail dragger uh, i'm looking forward to that it's a beautiful airplane unfortunately it's got a very light carrying capacity so i don't know that i'll be able to take passengers as you can see this uh, coronavirus uh, shut down and stay at home thing has not been kind to me I've, I've put on some weight because of this thing i gotta get out and go golfing and do some exercise or something but 
I'm looking forward to, to learning how to fly a tailwheel and kind of doing the slow and low kind of flying. I, I'm, I'm really interested in that. Uh, it, it looks like a lot of fun. I've been watching a lot of the YouTube videos, you know, the typical people, and uh, it seems like it would be a lot of fun to get into. So anyway, that's kind of where I'm at. I, I appreciate those who have uh, started following my, my videos. I'm hoping to start putting these out on a more regular basis. Uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, I appreciate you uh, subscribing and following along. And uh, by all means, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns as I start putting these back out, feel free to reach out to me and uh, look forward to getting these uh, videos together and starting to put this airplane together. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this here. This toolkit was fun, and uh, we'll see you guys next time around.